IHS, advancing decisions that advance the world. There's been a definite effect in the first half of the year. Um, what we've seen is the development of a, a two-speed sort of economy in, in the European passenger car market. Germany is the biggest passenger car market in Europe, and it's been leading the way in generating strong growth of 10.5%. But the other, the other economies, the other big, what we call the big five economies, Spain, Italy, the UK, and France, They've been struggling, uh, especially um, we've seen a 27% decline in Spain, which obviously hit by the debt crisis badly, 13% uh, fall in Italy and 7% in the UK. So we are seeing this sort of two-tier uh, market at the moment, really. It will go on, I think, for quite a considerable amount of time. Uh, it's going to take a long time for you know, the, the public finances situation in, in those countries I've just mentioned to, to sort of work itself through. Um, and also maybe the, gro the growth in Germany that we've seen might slow down a little bit as well because of higher base effects as well as well as a, for sort of an organic return to sort of natural growth after scrappage and obviously the downturn that we saw in 2009. Fuel prices haven't had too much of a marked effect. I think there's a general trend. Obviously, in overall terms across Europe in the first half of the year, we've seen a 2.1% decline. So there is an overall declining trend in the market. I'm sure in, in the, um, the sort of struggling economies, uh, the economies which are, have been hit with high levels of public debt, there's no doubt that high fuel prices are in the mix in terms of sort of low disposable incomes, and that, that will in turn affect uh, car, car sales as well. Um, but I think in terms of the fuel mix, I think y we're seeing a sort of return to sort of, of diesel sales in, in the post-scrappage environment. Um, but I, I think we've now seen that the split between diesel and gasoline sales will, will sort of re remain quite constant going forward over the next five years. We've certainly seen Volkswagen uh, do very, very well. It's, uh, it's the leading uh, OEM in the European market, and it, it re I think it boosted its sales by 5% you know, in, in a declining market in the first half of the year, which is a very impressive performance. You know, they're, they're basically pl plotting to take over the world, Vol Volkswagen at the moment, uh, looking to become the world's biggest car maker by 2018, and they're well on track to achieve that goal. Uh, the other car makers that have been doing well are the premium uh, brands as well. Uh, BMW have seen their sales rise by 10%. Audi by, by 5% and Mercedes-Benz by 2%. So there's definitely a return to the premium market at the moment. I think the French car makers are struggling. Uh, Renault have seen a, quite a big dip in their sales. They're struggling with an aging, an aging sort of model lineup as well. It's, it's a very competitive market amongst the sort of mid-market, what I call the mid-market brands in the European markets. So that's your Renaults, your, your PSAs, your Fords, and your, and your Opel, Vauxhall kind of brands. And they're, they're, they're finding it a tough market environment at the moment. Big trend has been the sort of the rise of the sort of comp the smaller sort of SUV kind of four x four kind of model. A, a lot of these vehicles are being sold with fuel efficient petrol and diesel engines, so they can sort of almost match your standard passenger cars in terms of their, their, their fuel efficiency. And I think they're really sort of uh, appealing to buyers in terms of the lifestyle choice. These these are cars like the, the Nissan Qashqai, um, the VW uh, uh, Tiguan. Those kind of vehicles are really really doing well at the, at the moment. IHS advancing decisions that advance the world.